Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I've been shopping. I went to Aldi and I got a couple of things and this is another thing that I got and it's a power meter. Those of you from the States have them uh, called... what are they called? These, these can be bought all over the world. I've seen multiple me films from United States where you have a lot of brands than this. Um, this is a German model. It's distributed from Hamburg in Germany. Um, and I bought this because it was cheap. Uh, I didn't pay much for it. It was like 80 kronas and that's a good price. Um, to be using a device like this and going around the house and measuring some of your devices you can very easily save 80 kronas on the device just by finding out what is it that's sucking up all of your electricity. So I wanted, to, I have, I have, I have had some of these, but I wanted a new one, and this one has special features. So I wanted to unbox this and show you what's in the box. Uh, it's brand new. And I got it today. Even have a receipt. Ooh, it fails on me. I can have it exchanged. Nice. This one is really meant for the Danish market, so everything is in Danish on it, which is problematic when you're doing YouTube videos in English. This is the box, and it's in Danish. It's a power meter, and it has different functions. It says that you can control your power expenses. The device can show you the, the power being used or change that into a price. So it can show you kilowatt hours or price. You're only supposed to be using this with an, a plug with an earth connection, which is grounded. And otherwise there are some different options. I'll just go through those. And the functions are, it's able to show the energy usage in kilowatt hours it's it can show you the the usage over the last seven days or seven months like it has small graphs on the display here and that gives you an, a representation of how how did it look over the last seven days slash seven months it can show you the power usage in amps, it can show you the voltage, what kind of voltage does your outlet provide, it can show you how many watts that are going through the, the device right now, it can show you the, the electric factor which is important in some cases and it has an over charging not charging but it has a kind of a fuse and it has a good manual or at least it claims that it has a, a good manual same picture same stuff so but let's open it it has some tape thing here let's see if I got the nails to take that off it usually works yeah, we're in. Let's see. Very nicely wrapped. Here we go. Has a bit of cardboard. The device. And the manual. And this one is in Danish. So they only supply the Danish manual. Okay. Let's unwrap the device and see what we got. Out of the bag, I'll just put those two things back in the bag. Made in Germany. So this should be good. And it has it has three connections. One of them is the ground connection. It says here that it's good for up to 10 amps and the maximum of 2300 watts 
There's two batteries in it. Let's let's see the batteries. There they are. And it has a little pull strip. That's it. The buttons are very nice. Cool. Funny thing is that it doesn't look like Yeah. They probably have another model in Germany because this is not the way that they do it in Germany. It, it needs a lot of thing to work on the German market. That's that's like a strip in the in the, in the bottom of it. But yeah, let's let's pull the power and see what happens. Easier said than done. I think I have to take these out out again and then pull. Okay. That was not the way to do it, but let's see if we can figure this out again. There's a nice little drawing on this, on the plastic of how the batteries should be put in. So I think we can manage that. And then we just need to find out how to put this one in again. Does it go? It doesn't go in. There's a slight corner there to show you how to put this back in. These things are actually quite hard to get down into these slots. There we are. And there's power on. Zero, zero, zero. But the time is running. So I'll plug this in and go read the manual and get right back to you. So I went through the manual and the first thing to do on this device it is more or less to set up the time and to configure time and date you press the set OK button for about three seconds there we are and it wants the time and let's see the the buttons to change value is value and display so value is plus well, plus a display is minus with a little minus. So the local time here is nineteen. And to move on to the next one, you hit history, which, and you set up the minutes, and it's forty-seven. So it's quicker to go backwards. Seven. Uh, let's see when seconds runs. We press OK, and we have the option of changing it from 24 hours to 12 hours. But I like that one. Then we need to set up the price of one kilowatt hour of electricity, and it's about two crown or something here. Um, so I'm gonna put in two two crowners and ten so put in two and history and ten and when you have set the final amount this is very this is not very accurate but it's close enough and to complete the settings you press history and history and history and history and okay and okay okay and we are out again and it shows time what time is it I think I just lost a minute in configuring configuring but it's not a big problem what the device thinks the clock is. It's, it's close enough. More important in full days to see how much power did the refrigerator use in seven days. And for that, one minute in either direction is not really important. Let's go through the different buttons. There is four buttons and the first one is called history. And it has to do with the graph thing down here. Oops, 
right light reflection or can you see you can see here yeah with this graph down here and now that this device is brand new there is nothing in the graphs but if I plug this into the refrigerator and there would be something over time and I would probably be able to see that the refrigerator uses more power in the weekends when I'm here and opens and closes the refrigerator by looking at the graphs and there would maybe be a, a line more uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday and that way I could see that the refrigerator was using more power but that's daily and by pressing it shows you monthly and it can show the, the energy usage over the last month. And once more, it, it shows daily diff and daily diff is, is the difference over seven days or seven months. So you should be able to see what, how much did the next month go up or down uh, compared to the first month. Uh, we're not able to see that because I haven't got any data in this because I just unboxed it. So, but it's there and it's shown by a little diff up here. And the first is daily diff and the second is monthly diff. And the bars over here are able, um, the amount of bars that are shown can can be altered so that it the meter can show smaller amounts of energy being used and larger amount of energy being used and the smallest amount is one bar for one kilowatt of power and it's up here and there are small one two three four uh, actually only one two three on it so one bar can can represent from one to three kilowatt hours and if you go to the month settings they will probably be in the higher ranges so, yeah that's kind of that button let's go back to the first one and then there's value right now we are measuring zero volts and we are measuring zero amps and we are measuring zero watts and the frequency is zero and the power factor is one and the maximum amps that has been measured on this device I have had it plugged in to the to my camera light here behind me and that used 1.368 amps and a maximum of 302 watts and we're back to where we started the second display uh, the third button is the second display right now that is showing the time but if we press it we can see that uh, how many kilowatt hours the, the device has measured and that was why that was because I had this plugged into the lamp a couple of days ago. Which brings me to another point. The device will actually store the data on the device even if you take out the batteries. But if you take out the batteries, you have to reconfigure the, the time on the device. Um, but all the data is still stored inside of the device which I can say because it was it said it in the manual and I actually took out the batteries and put on the little the little strip this little strip of insulation between the batteries so that the batteries wouldn't be worn out uh, until the next time I got to film this okay but it has used how, 0.552 kilowatt hours and right now the we can see that these figures in the first display are changing so they cycle and show you 
all the values not all of them but how many volts watts amps and i think frequency is the frequency in there oh never mind second display press one more and it shows the total amount of time that it has been running uh, one hour 52 minutes and 24 seconds and the total cost this is probably at zero because I hadn't put in the, the cost of a kilowatt hour when we started this so it's still at zero and that also means that it, we have used zero amount of uh, emissions and back to the time the last button the set OK button is more or less not to anything it's used when we configure the time and select different settings I'm gonna reset this uh, so that the data I used in it last time is deleted so that the cost becomes correct again to delete all recorded values let's just find a value that was oh not that one this one was recorded so to delete that you have to press uh, value and display the two middle buttons in at the same time for three seconds and the display should start blinking there and then after that you should press display and OK in at the same time oh I was too slow we'll do that again one two three blink and display and OK press those for three seconds and everything should be deleted the timer just reset the cost is reset that's reset the time is still in there that is not being reset and the, the emissions and the kilowatt hour price will still be in there too but now it's reset um, I think we should try and connected to some electronics here's my lamp that I used to get some more lighting for recording my film out here and there's a 300 watt light bulb in this and let's measure that so my light goes into actually it goes into the stove so if I take it out it becomes a lot darker so I'm gonna put it back in like that and this lamp has a funny thing it has like a, a box that can reduce the light like that so that makes it interesting to play with with the power meter I have the power meter here so I'm just gonna unplug the light and put this in and this the stove has the feature of having a pretty perfect grounding connection, so everything should be good. There. It's hit there perfectly. And as you can see, it now shows what the lamp is using. It uses 295 watts. 1.2484 amps and 230 volts is coming out of the plug. Let's try and see what values we get when we press this. We can see the, the usual values and then we can see the frequency 50 hertz should be good. The power factor is 99% 0 0.99 which is pretty close to 1. The maximum amount of power in amps that the meter has now seen is 1.286 and the maximum watch watts are 
296 volts. Yeah, it's the kilowatts. It's counting up very slowly how much that the meter has the lamp has used since we plugged it in. And this is the time that the meter has been in use. And back to the cost. It hasn't calculated the cost yet. I'm gonna change it to the to the wet setting up here, there. And we'll try and turn the light down. Right now it's using 0.4 watts, 0.45 something. Let's turn it up. Now it's using 90, 90 watts. That's not a lot of light for 90 watts, 100 watts. and this reducer thing it's not very it, it feels like it steals a lot of the power the first many watts are not giving very much light but I actually wanted to test this to see if when I actually use this if the lamp goes down in power and it does so that's kind of good 45 watts and it's pretty dark out here. And turn it over again. And we're back at 295.4 watts. All the uses of the grass down here is very hard to do in an unboxing video because we don't have enough data to do that. We can see what the displays time we have used. 0.017 kilowatt hours with with a usage of 295 watts it should take three hours something to use one kilowatt hour and one kilowatt hour is like 2.10 crowns one thing is a lamp you kind of know what the lamp uses of power because it's always on the bulb except the one that we just saw we were actually able to reduce the voltage or the, the power used in that. I have here a radio in my kitchen. And it plays radio. And I'm just gonna turn that off again. But I'm curious to see how much power that uses. So I'm gonna do that test. Normally it's plugged in at the floor to hide the wire away, but just for convenience we can plug it in here. And the radio boots. Um, but that doesn't show us how much power it uses, it just turns the radio back on. So we're gonna plug this in. Oh, the spider web or that didn't look good. So I'm gonna plug it into the power meter and plug the power meter into the wall. And we can see that it actually uses one. Oh, it changed again. 0.014 amps, and that's 1.16 something watts. So, about a watt in standby. It's not that bad, but a watt in standby 1.1, 1.15, 1.1. Almost two watts. It's about 40 kroners a year in power that the little radio uses. But just for giggles, let's turn it on and see how much it uses when it's on. Oh, and I pl unplugged it so it forgot the programming. But I expect the, the power to be quite the same. Just turn on the noise. About two watts, two point two. Two point something. So actually the radio only uses two watts when it's playing. Right beside it we have this pretty normal water kettle to heat 
some watering. Let's disconnect the radio. Put this back and pour over the water kettle. There we are. Hopefully the water kettle says zero. It uses absolutely zero when it's in standby. And I'm just gonna turn it on. Turn on the water bottle. Boiler. Eight amps. One thousand eight hundred and twenty-two watts. And this is two hundred and thirty oh, two hundred and twenty-four volts. The voltage actually dropped. 5 volts 6 volts It's probably losses in the wires We don't need to boil any water right now so I'm just going to turn it off again So it can show you how much a, a kettle of pretty normal household kettle how much power that uses Our plugs are usually uh, they have a fuse from 10 to 13 amps. So I haven't I'm not gonna test everything in the house right now But I have the refrigerator that I bought this summer. I did a video about that It wasn't really my choice because the old one just died But I'm actually pretty curious on how How that works how much uh, power that consumes and the refrigerator is not it's not on all the time it has a compressor at the back and that turns on and off when it's needed and so the compressor comes on and it runs for a while and it goes turns off again and it uses the same amount of power when it runs but the time it's on is the factor that changes if it's a bad refrigerator it's on more uh, so it's it's hard to you, you can't just put in the, the meter and s and in one step see, say that oh this refrigerator uses 150 watts but when does it use 150 watts there's of course some lights in the refrigerator when you when you open it there's a light bulb and that uses a little bit of power but that's that's so little compared to the rest of what the refrigerator uses so this meter is really very good for testing how much power does the refrigerator use over one week. And that's what I'm gonna try and do. I just happens to have the refrigerator uh, plugged into a uh, extension thing key like this. And the refrigerator is the black one. The white one is the microwave oven that's on top of it. And I'm going to plug it in there and leave it for a week, at least, and see how it looks next weekend. So, uh, but I'm going to start with resetting the, I'm going to reset this again, just because I can. Press these two. Blinking, and press these two. And it's reset. And I'm gonna plug it in. So I found an extension cord with um, at least a hole for earth connection in one end and not one in the other end. So I'm gonna plug this in. Plug one there. And we're gonna plug the refrigerator in. That's out of framing, I think. Yeah. But it's hanging here. I'm gonna get rid of the wire, and this can be put in behind it. Uh, okay, there's actually some power usage. 1.6 watts. When it's not when it's not doing anything, I'll just try and turn on the light here. See how much the light uses. Uh, that's quite a lot. Oh, and. The and the thing closes up again. We have a bottle of champagne sticking out so that the light doesn't slow. 
and the light inside actually uses about 16 watts. I'm gonna let this run for a week until next week when I get here and hide the wires away. So, and put the bubbles of champagne back in. So that's it from this video and the unboxing of the power meter. It, I haven't found a name on it, so I have no idea who produced it or what's it called. But it was bought in LD. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to write them down in the comments. I'm still able to answer all incoming comments, uh, at least until further notice. Thank you for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Have a really nice day. Bye bye.